Hi guys. You going on in here? Hi, Art. Hi. Um, from Vinus Rivery Wine Merchant. Thanks for joining us. Happy Friday. Yet another week. Yes, we're doing the eclectic pair today. Uh, we're going to do uh, a white wine from Loire Valley and a uh, red wine from Portugal. Okay, well, let's start with the first one. So tell me about this this wine that we got right here. Yeah, so it's Clement and Florian Berthier. Uh, that's the name of the winery. Uh, and uh, the name of the cuvee is called, is called Terry de Silex. Okay. Uh, yeah, no. Celix is that's a big text on the bottle. Looks yeah, cool. can you show it one more time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, then I'll write it for you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the big X. Yeah, right, right. yeah, and a lot of the Loire producers, uh, especially around the area of Sancerre, they like to uh, showcase the big Celix. So Celix is the uh, specific uh, um, soil. It, it's uh, uh, it's mostly clay soil, but there's a, a, a lot of flint in it. So, so they call it Celex. So, so Flint, it comes from the uh, Cretaceous period. So it's some of the oldest uh, formations in, in the you know, history of the world. Yeah, I got a sidebar on that, actually. Let's go um, to the sidebar no, first, do, yes. <laughs> all I do is sidebar. Yes. So um, I would say Flint, um, I don't really recall what that was, because um, some of us were asleep in geology class. So uh, for everybody probably already knows. But in case you've forgotten, like me, um, Flint is used to like start fire and make yes. tools and during mm -hmm. the stone age it was super critical um obviously because those things were important and apparently um it was like a big trade item um all over you know so um i guess flint ridge in ohio is a big um flint deposit area and so you can find flint all across the united states was traded by the native americans so that was my little distraction i, I went down this rabbit hole on the internet trying to figure out what flint was yeah. how it was used to make knives so anyways, there's a lot of flint deposits near this winery. That's kind of the, it's supposed yeah. to be contributing to the smoky flavors of this wine, correct? Yeah, so, so it's uh, uh, from uh, similar to uh, gun flint, like gun smoke. So, you know, like when you shoot a gun, like I can, can you were explaining this thing, you know, starts fire. So that's kind of the specialty of this uh, Celex yeah. uh, soil. So uh, uh, the larger region is Loire Valley. Okay. This is on the east side of the Loire Valley, uh, Valley the most east side. Um, uh, Sancerre is the most famous uh, sub-region uh, within the Loire Valley. And uh, this is right northwest of Sancerre. It's called uh, Coteau du Ginawa. That uh, is, is the tiniest appellation within uh, the upper Loire Valley. And uh, all the white wines, uh, Sancerre plus... Uh, uh, Côte de Genoa, it's uh, Sauvignon Blanc. Okay, so, so yeah. that's the thing, right? Yeah. So all Sancerres are Sauvignon Blancs, but obviously not all Sauvignon Blancs are Sancerres. So yes, the yes. To keep in mind. Yes, and, and I think Sancerre is a very famous name. I think a lot of casual wine drinkers know what it is. And, and, and a lot of them associate Sancerre with, uh, I want to say with like a grape variety. But it, it's a region. It's not right. a grape variety. Right. Uh, but uh, the the white grapes in that region are always Sauvignon Blanc. Always. Okay. So so whenever uh, somebody says Sancerre and it's a white wine, it's always Sauvignon Blanc. Okay. So that's just kind of like debunking a little thing. Yeah. So this you know uh, uh, relatively uh, uh, a new newer winery. I think maybe uh, thirty five years in existence. Uh, it's named, uh, like I said, Clement and Florian. So Clement is the older brother. Uh, Florian is the younger uh, brother. Uh, and Berthier is the name of the of the family, obviously. Okay. So, uh, and like I mentioned, is the, the tiniest appellation in the Loire Valley. Uh, these guys, they, they try to be um, as healthy as possible when they grow their uh, vines. So there's no pesticides, yeah. no herbicides. Uh, they try to be organic whenever they can be. So they're not... They're technically not organic farming all over the place, but they try to be. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, they have different uh, uh, cuvées, and the Celex is like a like a single uh, uh, vineyard cuvée. So so all the wines come from the single vi vineyard. Like I said, it's dominated by the special Celex soil, and uh, uh, part part of the uh, soil. Uh, the the other um, specialty of that is that it uh, uh, ages wines longer. That that's uh, so. Oh, you can age this much better. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you know, a, 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 a lot of uh, a lot of it is specific. So, so Sancerre is it's, it's a bigger appellation. Uh, they're Celex soils, but not all of it is Celex. But here they they call uh, Côte du Genoa. Uh, they almost say it's like a pearl. 
it's like a tiny Appalachian and it's it's so dominated with this special soil that they produce this uh, you know special wines. Uh, so super uh, unique terroir is essentially what yeah, it is. Yes, very super unique, unique terroir. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, so yeah. So and you know I, I think uh, you know, tasting it. Uh, yeah, I've been working on it, so I'm a little advanced from you, but yeah. So I, pungent, a little yeah. pungent, uh, smoke on it. Apple, yeah. uh, green apple, it's super juicy, um, so very, you can get that ripe apple feel to it, which is very nice. And it's yeah. really highly rated, right? So 92 points, one enthusiast, and yes, Janice yes. Robinson, she gave it 17. Yeah, 17, yeah, that's a high score. Yeah, very high. Okay. And, and you know, uh, some recommendations. I think uh, some of the pairings for this wine is uh, sushi, uh, uh, tuna, uh, and then uh, they have the famous goat cheese in Loire Valley, uh, Val Valencore, I think it's called. Uh, so, so that's uh, a lot of you know people pair it with that cheese. So yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I was I was laughing, laughing at Rob's uh, comment. He said we color coordinated, but I don't really think that we did. We're it's a little different, but that's okay. Thank you. Is it matching with the background? Or? I'm not sure. Are we blending it or not? But yeah. So I also speaking of back to yeah. food. More importantly, the so pork and shellfish. Um, and yeah, goat cheese. That's what I had written down as well. So. That's what. You, oh yeah. yeah. And, and uh, I don't know if you guys uh, um, you know received the newsletter, but, but in, in today's newsletter uh, uh, we actually discussed a, a couple other uh, Loire Valley wines, and I attached a presentation from European Cellars, uh, which is one of the importers. Uh, they special uh, some of their specialty is the Loire w wines, and it's a great one-hour presentation. They talk about like uh, the, the the chalky soils in other parts of Loire Valley, and just these rocks that are, you know, uh, famous rocks that are, you know, like uh, millions of years old. Uh -huh. And it, it's a great uh, presentation just to learn about Loire Valley, it, the different sub-regions. It, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's a relatively big uh, valley. It goes from the Atlantic Ocean all the way to central France. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's many different soil types, uh, many different appellations. So you, obviously, you have the Sauvignon Blanc. Chenin Blanc is another famous white grape that's grown in different parts of the uh, Loire Valley. But yeah, the presentation, I, I submitted a link. I think it's a, it's a fun geek out kind of section. Okay. So yeah. we have got a few regulars who love to geek out, so they should check it out. Yeah, I, I, I mean, it's fun. They talk about all the castles in, in the region, all the caves, you know, uh, all, all that stuff. Yeah, so so uh, it, it's fun. It's, it's, it's like a travelogue. That's why I, I think I named it in the... You know, newsletter, you know, right now, that's the best way to, to travel is through wines. Okay, so if you're feeling cooped up, you got to go find the newsletter yes. right now. Yes, okay. yes, yes. All right, all right, so that was... Uh, okay, uh, the, can you the, grab the, that bottle for me? I don't want to reach all the yes, way. Yes, yes, it's done. I have T-Rex arms. So. No okay, cool. So what is this one? This is the Adegame? Adegame is the yeah, winery, yeah. Yeah, and the winery is absolutely gorgeous because, you know, the first thing I do is I start Googling wineries. Yeah, some of the if you go to the website, I think the main website. Yeah, they, very, they definitely very. try to promote how beautiful they are. Yeah, and uh, but the other thing I noticed they're promoting, uh, and I haven't uh, noticed this promoted actually that much, is that uh, I think it says uh, right there like inspired by the Atlantic or Atlantic in inspiration. Yeah, and you know we live here on the West Coast, and obviously Napa uh, always kind of promotes itself like oh we have the Pacific Ocean the Pacific Ocean has breathed it comes to the alley at these angles you know stuff like that so they always promote Pacific 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 Ocean but I haven't seen you know like Northwest Spain or, or Portugal or the one that, or or even you know like I mentioned earlier part of the uh, uh, Loire Valley which is on Atlantic Ocean they don't kind of they don't promote that part of it. Uh, but but this wine, they're like, hey, our wines are special because uh, Atlantic Ocean has such an influence on that. So I, I, I it kind of stood out for me during my research on that. Okay. I'm gonna quickly finish. I know, like down it. So yeah, I um, I mean, first off, it's a Petit Verdot, which is typically you don't see wines that are just Petit Verdot. It's a blending grape, correct? It's a Bordeaux blending grape. Bordeaux. So, okay. Uh, uh, whenever you hear a Bordeaux blend, it could be one of five grapes. Yes. Yeah. So um, Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot are probably the two most famous ones. Then you have Cabernet Franc, uh, you have Malbec, mm -hmm. and you have Petit Verdot. And typically Petit Verdot is always maybe uh, that and Malbec are the tiniest parts of the blend. 
and you you hardly ever see 100% varietals of uh, uh, Petit Verdot. So uh, it's, uh, California makes some. I think I, I, I've seen Livermore, for example, make 100% uh, Petit Verdot. And Napa and Sonoma make it. Uh, so so it, it's interesting that uh, uh, this wine in Dego Maine, which is 40 miles north of uh, Lisbon. Where's the map? Yeah, I don't have, yeah, I don't have the map. <laughs> okay, that's okay. Okay, so 40 miles north of Lisbon. So yeah. You're talking about the top of the... Okay. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the grape itself, it, it has uh, 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 quite a few similarities uh, to uh, Cabernet Sauvignon. Uh, it both has uh, thick skins, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, when uh, it, it has big tannic structures, it could be very uh, dark and concentrated, uh, and it needs uh, 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 some sun in order to mature all the way through. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, frequently in Bordeaux, uh, may maybe that's why. Uh, California winemakers play with it more than the actual uh, Bordeaux winemakers because California is warmer and that's what it needs. So, um, you know, that's kind of the, the interesting uh, uh, kind of little backstory about the, the actual grape. Um, yeah, I mean, this is, a, you know, Petit Bordeaux. It's like um, strong. It's got some fruit and some leather to it. I don't know what yeah. tasting notes you came up with, but I definitely want to eat like game or, or i don't know what game is actually to be honest but um beef or lamb or like steak something really yeah. meaty and rich um so or if you're vegetarian i think the portobello mushrooms and balsamic glaze is going to be good yeah it's super super yeah. super dark super inky mm -hmm. a very nice smell what tasting notes would you give this definitely dark fruit on the nose mm -hmm. oh oh yeah they're standing so this is 2015 it's got well, some like bitter berry at the end. It's very yeah. nice. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, 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 that uh, finish is really nice. Mm -hmm. on, on the front end of the palate, I feel a lot of um, definitely depth. Definitely tannins are still there. I mean, yeah. This could easily go another five, six years. It's a 2015. Um, yeah, you can definitely see it. It's really nice. Uh, really nice wine. It's a, a good combination, I think, of fruit. Uh, to tannins. It's very balanced. It's yeah. not like a fruit bomb, you yeah. know, so it's got some some interest there. Yes. And, and what's interesting about uh, a little kind of background of that, so like I was mentioning, Atlantic Ocean, and what uh, a lot of the um, wines along the, the, the coast of Portugal and uh, uh, northwest Spain is, is they specialize in white wines. Uh, so you, your Vino Verde region is there, Galicia in, in Spain, mm -hmm. uh, and one of the reasons uh, Especially with Adego May, is that they grow their white wines um, close to the Atlantic on the mountains. So, yeah, so, <laughs> so okay. this is my visuals. You know, try to visualize. Right, that. Back. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and um, but the valleys, that's where they grow the red grapes. Okay. Uh, and the reason is uh, they want to protect uh, um, uh, the vineyards uh, from the breeze from the Atlantic. Okay. Yeah, the valleys are warmer. Uh, it's right. warmer, right? And and, and Petit Verdot needs uh, warmth, and uh, also drastic, more drastic uh, temperature changes. So it goes from uh, uh, you know like uh, hot days to much cooler nights, which is another plus, uh, you know, for Petit Verdot or, or other great, uh, red grape varietals that they try to specialize in. So you know that's just kind of a little background information about you know kind of the difference between the two. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the whites and the reds, how, how they, they grow both of them. So. Cool. Well, so, this is, um, I, I don't know what you all saw, but I saw that it had 90 points, wine enthusiast. So, yes, yeah. Um, you know, solid. Think, it's, a, it's, a, yeah. it's a solid score. To me, this is wine tastes really nice. Yeah. Uh, I actually uh, uh, think it's, uh, uh, maybe it could be even higher, maybe. Well, I mean, I think it's got some um, potential to age there. So, you know, obviously, Ratings change depending on how the wine develops as it ages. And uh, what I noticed with a lot of uh, Portuguese wines, you know, a lot, of, especially the indigenous varietals. So obviously, particularly those not indigenous varietals, uh, varietal, but uh, both the whites and reds could age for some time. Uh, like Turiga Nacional, that's the most famous uh, uh, red grape from uh, Portugal. Easily ten years. I mean, uh, that's uh, that's one on par with you know Cabernet Sauvignon. There's uh, just, oh, I had one more uh, pretty cool uh, tidbit about uh, Adega May, mm -hmm. and that is the, the winemaker for Adega May is Anselmo Mendes, uh, which if you guys uh, watched the uh, uh, episodes from the, uh, uh, from about, I think, 
two weeks ago, we, we did a comparison of uh, Alvarino from Northwest Spain yes. versus Alvarino from Vina Verde region in Northwest Portugal. And uh, the Alvarino was made by uh, Anselmo Mendes under his own uh, 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 winery, Anselmo Mendes. Yeah. And uh, it was a great, first of all, it was a great Alvarino. He's one of the best Vina Verde uh, producers uh, in Portugal. And actually, Robert Parker said that he's one of the best uh, winemakers in, uh, yes. uh, in Portugal, too. He he was uh, in '98. I think he was he won as the enologist of the year. Yeah. Uh, at a you know, relatively young age, he was only like 10 years in the business. Uh, so, so a spectacular winemaker. So, so you know, it's definitely uh, uh, pretty cool that he's behind this wine. Yeah, it's actually it says uh, I was just looking at the bottle. Yeah, right there. And Selma Mendes is the winemakers. Right. So that's one of those rock star winemakers that we try to always talk about. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we were praising him. Uh, his uh, vineyard Verde, which were, were great. And this is obviously on the opposite spectrum. Here you have a full, uh, full-bodied uh, red wine versus a light-bodied white wines. But you know, a great winemaker. He's a great winemaker. So, yeah. yeah. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, that was one of my favorite tastings, actually, was the Alvarino versus Alvarino. Yeah, Same grape, different that was country. pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If you guys, if you guys missed it, I think we still have it on our Facebook Live. Yeah, it's there. Yeah. Well, that, that was pretty, pretty cool uh, geek out session also. So, you know, I enjoyed the wines. Uh, you know, I hope you guys enjoyed listening about the wines. And uh, it, was, it was a fun conversation. Again. Yeah, so, yeah. So we got these two. Um, if you want to grab them, check them out. Yeah, should we and, just show them one more time before we head out? Sure. Yeah, you want to show that one first? Or, uh, yeah, go so this wide. is the first one. This is the, say it for me. Celix. Celix, okay. So very nice uh, Sauvignon Blanc. And then this one was the Petit Verdot um, as, by Adega Adega May, right? yes. Yeah, awesome. Very cool. All right, guys. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you next week. Take care. Bye. See you.